Good morning to all those tuning in. This is the Web 11 and today we're back to playing Kato. We're gonna be continuing off from last we left off. So let's get right into it. Returning home in the morning, I'm met with a surprise. I look through my pockets for my keys only to find none. I must have dropped them somewhere. With resignation, I knock steadily on the door. A short while later, Roselle opens it up with a surprised look on her face. She looks tired. I'm not sure if I woke her up or not, however. So, I'm. My, is this Roselle? I never figured that out. I drop my keys. Oh. I'll have a look. I'll have to go looking for them after I had time to sleep. Are you going anywhere? No, not really. With that, we separate into our respective rooms. And go to sleep. I am kind of wor worried about Roselle. Um, she doesn't look good. She isn't acting the best. I go to the bakery during the afternoon. This time around, as the bakery won't be opened in the weekend due to the move. So this will be the last time I go visit. Oh, go to this alley. During the walk, I'm sure to keep my eyes peeled in case I drop my keys here. But I'm fairly sure I didn't. I enter the bakery and I'm almost feeling a little nostalgic as I look around. It won't change my routines that much to go to the new place, but I'm a bit worried about Tiger. I ask the owner about it when she hands me my bread. Will you bring the cat along with you to your new place? The only gently shakes her head. There's no good place for it to stay at the new bakery. And we can't let it inside. Isn't there anyone that can take it home then? We have tried that, but it got really angry and anxious when we tried to carry it away. He really likes it with us, but when push comes to shove, we'll have no choice but to force it to. I'm sure it'll work out somehow. Have you seen a pair of keys, by the way? I've dropped them somewhere. I haven't, but I'm sure to be on the lookout. The owner smiles reassuringly and continues on with work. I leave the bakery feeling ill at ease. Oh, Tiger's sad. I walk up to Tiger and I notice that it looks a bit uneasy, but cheers up some when it sees me. The cat must know something's going on. I should at least try to comfort it some before I go. Uh, cheer it up with play. What? I'm gonna pet it gently, because it's a lazy cat. Yeah, there you go. Cuddles are the best cure for anxiety. I sit down next to its li little bed and reach out my hand to caress its head. Tiger closes its eyes, purring, and we sit like that for a while. We can't leave Tiger without anyone caring for it. It feels weird to think of a cat being anywhere else but here, in the back alley. This is its home. I keep an eye close on the cat. It's looking much happier after some cuddling. A thought starts to play in my mind. What if I could take Tiger home with me? Tiger seems like a cat that would, that would like most people. Sure, that might be a presumption, but I feel like we could have a little bit of a special bond. I've gotten better with cats, I think, and I know Roselle uh, owned cats in the past, so we'd be able to take be able to care for it. 
Our apartment is big enough, and my income isn't too bad. It could be doable. No, it's entirely doable. Let's try it out. It will depend on if Tiger likes me or the bakery more entirely. Tiger inches closer to my hand and snuggles close to it. Oh, the little bastard's sad. I stroke it gently with my free hand. Ah, uh, give it treats, call bluff, spoil it with further... I'm going to spoil it. I roll up my sleeves and crack my knuckles. I hey quiet joke to myself. The charm blitz is on and there is no escaping it. I'll make Tiger happy, not so little cat. Oh, a happy, not so little cat. Oh, because it's a big chunkers. I begin by scratching behind the cheeks. I run my fingers through the thick fur and give it a scratch from ear to chin. I move my hands down to the chest and neck digging into the fluffy chest hair. When I scratch the fur, it's over its shoulders. I notice its front paw claws, the quilt under its in comfort. The cat rolls over, exposing its tummy. I give Tiger a proper belly rub. Tiger must feel spoiled to bits after that. The cat rem remains on its back, eyes closed, but gives me a glance. It looks it to, it looks seems to say, "Oh, you finished already? Weren't you supposed to be feeling bad?" Tiger chases after my hand, demanding to receive more pets, even though I've already been at it for f minutes already. When I don't immediately comply, it looks at me with those puppy eyes. Tiger certainly seems to want to keep me around, but is that enough for it to be willing to follow me home? I'd like to give the cat a little test to see. Hmm... It is lazy. I don't think it will walk if I take it. Let's carry it in its bed. The bed... Oh, it didn't like that. The bed might be what marks its alley as home. It might feel more secure with the move if I bring something like that with us. I will move the roof and try to pick it up. It's a bit unwieldy, but I shuffle it around to get a better grip. Before I can get one, Tiger jumps overboard, not feeling safe in the sinking ship. The cat sits down next to the bakery door. With a faint smile, I, pace the, I place the bed back and fix the roof. Looks like it wants to stay here after all. No, I messed up. Tiger doesn't want to leave. And like the owner, I don't want to force it. Oh... I think I messed up somewhere. The best thing would be for Tiger to stay with the bakers somehow, and I think I have an idea of growing. I snuggle the cat's cheek and head back into the bakery. They only looks up at me with a raised eyebrow. If the cat can't stay behind the store, couldn't it stay in front of it? Maybe it could attract customers. I fiddle with my fingers, unsure what she'll think of my idea. That might just work. The cat has always loved people, so if we could make it a proper home by the door, then we wouldn't have to force it anywhere either. I call him Tigger. Tiger, by the way. I have never heard you call it by any name, so I took the liberty of naming it. The owner starts to chuckle. I never got to that. Tiger, you say? It fits strangely well. I bid my goodbye and head out again. I can't spot my keys anywhere, but I can't help but feeling cheerful for having found a solution for Tiger. I must have dropped my keys somewhere along the canal. So I'll go there next. So I think... You only get one picture of each cat in the game, 
and it heavily depends on your choices with the first picture. At least that's what I think. Um, as to get to the town path, it's already becoming dark. I'm placing my hopes on that the setting sun will hit my keys just right and make them shine up. I keep my eyes peeled on the ground, making my way ba back to my workplace along the canal. A hunch makes me look back and surely I spot Ruffles. Ruffles! Following me with silent steps. Ah, oh, hey, little buddy. I wonder if... I wonder for how long it has been doing that. Or... why? Possibly to keep an eye on anyone in its turf. The cat keeps stalking... Stalking me a slight distance, and I ignore it the best I can. My keys are my top priority at the moment. I walk the entire town path without spotting them. I guess I'll walk back, check some of the busier areas more careful, carefully. I spot that Ruff Ruffles has stopped following me and it and is playing with something next to the edge of the canal. My keys. Good. Good that. It's keeping itself entertained. Search under the bridge, walk the entire path again, check out what the cat is doing. I'm a bit curious to us what would interest Ruffles. My keys can wait this long, they can wait a little longer. A cat is sitting next to the water, poking at something casually. It almost, almost like it doesn't want to admit that it's playing. When I get closer, I get a better look at the object. Wait! Those are my keys Ruffles is playing with. I can't believe the cat managed to find them. I don't have time to take a sigh of leave before the cat pokes my keys. So they close inch <laughs> So they inch closer to their watery doom. I must do something quick to prevent the a catastrophe from happening. Good pun. Uh, I could walk up and grab them, run and grab my keys quickly, near slowly and try to keep its attention. Um, I'm gonna do this one. Oh, that didn't work. I reach out my hand and f I'm ta getting terrible at this, aren't I? Uh, I reach out my hand in front of me, trying to mentally keep the cat still. I hunch slightly and walk closer. Careful not to agitate the cat. It looks at me momentarily before losing interest and looks down at the keys again. Now there, Ruffles, let's not be hasty. I watch as it paws close in on the bundle. Ruffles! I leap forward, but it's too late. I watch the keys tumble over the edge and hear the splash echo in my head. Uh die for the keys. Without a moment's hesitation, I throw my bag with valuables to the side and run for the water. I pass Ruffles and jump feet first into the canal. Cold water hits me and I swim up to the surface to orientate myself. The water is completely black. How can I possibly find my keys in this? My hand hits something sharp and I recoil. I take a look at what it uh, can be, and it's my keys. I keep myself afloat, dumbfounded for a moment before I grab them. Oh, right. I have a cork as my keychain. Oh, I could have just stared. I must call my mom and thank her for the gift when I get home. I pull myself up the edge, and it is met with a scornful face of a cat. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to irritate you. It would appear some water splashed on it when I jumped in. Oops. Oh well. It's the comeuppance for pushing my <laughs> pushing the keys in to begin with. I apologize and squeeze some water out of the hem of my shirt. If Ruffles is slightly damp, I am literally drenched here. Wait until the cat, till my things dry, go home. Um, I think I'll just wait. Yeah, 
I can't really go home like this, and some of the evening is one. I remove my shoes and empty them into the canal before putting them to dry next to me. I squeeze out the water the best I can for my clothes, and then I wait. Ruffles joins me by licking her s itself dry. Maybe it isn't that mad at me since it sticks around. I guess I might forgive it too then. It takes time, but eventually my things are dry enough that I feel comfortable going home. Thank you for the company. I said my goodbyes, so I start to head home. Oh, I wish I didn't, like, upset it. I think I should have walked. I walk down the familiar town path. I wonder how Roselle is doing at home. After a while, I recognize faint footsteps behind me, and I turn to see that Ruffles is still following me. That's weird. I shrug, thinking it will stop eventually, but as I leave the town path, it's still following me. You coming with me, huh? Ruffles responds by following along the way to my door. This is my stop. Ruffles has stopped and is looking at me, waiting. Having said my goodbyes, I open the door only for Ruffles to wa <laughs> waltz on in like it owns the place. It looks like I got a new cat. I could have got all three, but I don't think I am going to. Ruffles immediately starts to investigate the room, walking along all of the walls and jumping on the furniture. We'll have to set up house rules eventually if it really wants to stay. Ro, can you- <laughs> I'll just say it normally. Ro, can you come out here for a second? After a moment, Roselle makes her way out of her room, rubbing her eyes. Yeah, so that is- that has to be Roselle. What is it? I look at Ruffles, and for the first time, she notices the cat. What? I know, right? It followed me home. Ruffles eyes the new human suspiciously f from its spot on the sofa. Oh, it even has its own spot. Ro crouches down next to it and starts to work her magic. It doesn't take long for Ruffles to soften up to it. Oh, it's just a big softy. We'll need to get it some things if it's going to stay here. The shops are closed now, but I can get everything first thing tomorrow. I can make you a list. We should also get it checked by the vet since it's a stray. I bet it will love that. Uh, maybe not, but we have to make sure it's healthy. Much has happened today, so I decide to head to bed early and leave them to bond them for themselves. And go to sleep. I don't know why the uh, go to sleep and go to work options aren't automatic, but it's fine. It I guess it helps pacing a bit. I am kind of interested in um, bringing that fat cat home. Because I think uh, that would be a really good one. I brought the new things and I'm heading out for my Sunday stroll. By the look of it this morning, Ruffles and Roselle are getting along well, so I'm not the slightest bit worried over leaving them alone. As I near the pedestrian street, I peel my eyes, trying to spot a certain kitten. I'll most likely find it in its usual spot, but I don't trust it not to have moved. I see the tree in the distance, and it grows closer as I walk. There's no kitten to be seen. I reach the corner and soak around the tree, but I can't see Tangerine. Maybe it actually got home. If that were to be the case, it would be great. A meow crushes my hopes, and I look around, still not spotting it. The next meow, and I can, can tell it comes from above, and I look up. Oh, the kitty's fighting. Tangerine looks down at me from a high branch up in the tree. What is it doing up there? It doesn't look very safe. I haven't climbed a tree in ages, but I did it back in my day. Except for the first part. 
It looks like an easy, pretty easy climb. Um. Ah. I don't think I can get it up on raw power. Um. I'll see if I can get it down on my own. Yeah, that worked. It isn't certain that Tangerine really is stuck, and it would be a shame to do anything risky if it was necessary. That, and you don't want to find the cat. I'll try and see if it will come down first on its own. I stand next to the trunk and call, the, call to the kitten. Tangerine meows back, and I see it moving its paw slightly, but not moving away from the spot high up in the tree. After trying some more and giving the kitten some time, I figure it must actually be stuck. It's possible that it's just too scared of people to come down. But when is Paris ever empty? I have to do something. It needs my help. Um, I don't know what this is. Arbanist? Um... Uh, I'm gonna try and find something. Ah, uh, that was neutral. I look around, finding a wheeled garbage bin around the corner. I'll put it back when I'm done with it, but for now, I pull it next to the tree. Careful not to scale the kitten any further, I climb up on the bin. From there, it's not too great of a task to find footing at the lowest branch. I look up and the kitten stares back at me, meowing me meekly and visibly scared. Someone must have startled it up here and it doesn't know how to get back down. It looks at me and I'm fairly sure it recognizes me. Um, I'm gonna do it slowly. I can't really afford scaling it any further up the tree. Tangerine is already out on very thin twigs. With all its claws, it's sticking to the wood, and I don't want it to let go of that grip before I can catch it. I slowly move to the next foothold, and then pause there until Tangerine stops watching me. Then I advance to the next spot. It's very slowly going, and my arms feel a bit tired, but eventually I reach the same height that Tangerine's at. The kitten, however, is slightly too far away. I might be able to lean out and to grab it, or possibly lure it in closer. Uh, food worked last time. Let's try food. Yeah, that worked. I make sure to sit. I sit steadily on my branch and then carefully extract the treats from my pocket. If Tangerine has been up here for a while, it might actually be hungry. I reach out with a treat and I immediately see the kitten's nose twitching and sniffing the air. You know you want it, come and take it. After a moment's hesitation, it eases closer, carefully making its way back along the thin branch. I lay my hand flat and the kitten grabs the treat and devours it in seconds. It really is hungry. It, I feed it more treats, making it come a little closer each time before I grab the kitten with both hands and place it in my lap. I feed it the rest of the treats and it eagerly eats every one, single one of them with a cute face to boot. It's hungry and a bit uh, and a bit tired, but otherwise fine. Now comes the part where I have to get both of us down safely. I reach for my bag. That's possibly the best way to carry the kitten, as it keeps both my hands free. Sorry, this will be over in a minute. I grab Tangerine and put it in the bag before placing it over my back again. After that, I began my steady descent and pull it off smoothly. When I reach the last fork in the tree, I drop down and make a freeing tangerine my top priority. I open up the bag and bring the kitten up in my arms. 
After a few seconds of being safe in my arms on the ground, the kitten falls asleep. I look at it curious curiously and stroke it gently over its back. It almost it's almost surreal. Now I'm faced with what to do next. I'd rescued Tangerine from the tree, but I don't want to let it go of the kitten again. I don't want to be uncertain whether or not it has a warm place to sleep and food to eat. I'll take it home with me. We can look for its owner, and if we can't, if we don't find anyone, Tangerine will stay with us. That's two cats down. And a third I didn't manage to get. Oh well. The kitten wakes up just before I get home, but it is still sleepy. At the door, I decide to knock and wait. I hear Ro walk across the room, and she opens the door for us. Surprise! You have to stop bringing home cats. Think about my heart. I'll try and keep that in mind. It looks tired. Is it okay? I found it stuck in the tree. It took some time to get down. The poor thing. For how long was it up there? No idea. Anyways, let's take it to my room and let it rest and eat. We should keep the cats separate, separated for some time, too, so they can get used to each other. Cats need some time for that. Will you take Tangerine, then? I don't want to leave Ruffles on its own. She nods, and I carefully hand over the kitten. Tangerine looks a little worried at first, but Ro manages to calm it down in no time at all. She leaves and I throw myself on the sofa, enjoying Ruffles' quiet company. Some time later. So I'm assuming there's gonna be four endings. Maybe a few more than that. It took some time before Ruffles and Tangerine learned to know each other. But now they're inseparable. Tangerine sticks to the older cat night and day. And Ruffles is starting to look like a proud parent, teaching the kitten everything it knows. Thanks to that and Rose's efforts, we don't have a shy kitten anymore, but a bold, playful young cat that lives its life to the fullest. The cats aren't the only ones that have showed improvement. Roselle's... <laughs> Roselle looking much better nowadays. I knock against the door frame before entering. I bet you the fat cat would be on the couch. That's my guess. Hey, Le Lemon. What's up? Not much, Ro. How was the lecture? It was alright, I suppose. Interesting contents, but a bad pre presenter. Well, ain't that university in a nutshell. Yeah, college sucks too. I should know. Oh yeah, it sure is. That's an overpriced course lecture. Say, I got no more studying to do today. I don't suppose you fancy going out on the town. Oh, she asked me. She's opening up. Maybe grab an ice cream or something? You're already done? To think, you once had me thinking you dropped out. It took a lot of work to catch up, but I'm going to do things properly this time. Let's celebrate then. And get that ice cream. Ro and I say goodbye to the cats, knowing that they're managed by themselves. We set out on our walk, chatting and enjoying the sun. Ro and I banter, joke, and laugh our way through Paris, just like old times. Cato. And that's the ending. So, there are six other pictures, and 
I'm guessing what? One, two, three. Uh, four, five. What, six? Seven. I'm guessing eight endings? Um, I'm not too sure. It doesn't actually say. Um. But. I will go ahead and do all those. But. I can't do them, uh, today. Um, so, you'll actually get another, um, uh, broadcast for all those. So, I hope that's alright. Um, I actually really like this game. The aesthetics were amazing. Oh yeah, there's that cat. Um, so the aesthetics are great. The music was just a cherry on top of everything. And actually learning and bonding with all the cats was actually quite challenging, but it was very rewarding. So I do think I will, um, I, I really do think I will actually really like this game and replaying it. Um, and I mean, I do highly suggest anyone, um, who's gotten to this point to actually check it out. It's been a great game. I, the only thing I'm actually kind of disappointed in is that there isn't really any more to it. Yeah, I was actually kind of expecting it to be a little longer, but it's actually a really good length. And I think if the um, devs actually decide to make another game about dogs, I think it would be very popular. And I'm kind of disappointed that this game isn't as popular as it should be. But, ah, that's just me. So, I think that's good for today. So, thank you for tuning in on our frequency. This is the Rebel Lemon signing off. So good night and sweet nightmares.